My name is Wojtek Jamroga, and I am going to talk about formal verification of multi-agent systems, and in particular about some recent results on so-called partial order reduction for strategic ability. This is joint work with Wojtek Penczek, Teofil Sidoruk, Piotr Dębiński and Antoni Mazurewicz. Let me start by introducing the landscape, uh, namely uh, the basic idea behind uh, formal specification and verification of strategic ability. Uh, many important properties of multi-agent systems are based on the ability or inability or particular players to achieve uh, particular goals. And uh, the good news is that uh, there are some nice formal languages to specify such properties, in particular the model logic ATL. And uh, there are also some algorithms to do formal verification by model checking. To give you an example, let's consider a standard property of uh, voting systems uh, called coercion resistance. The idea is that uh, even if there is a, uh, an agent who wants to coerce or blackmail or uh, um, force in some way a, a given voter to cast a vote for a given candidate, uh, there should be no strategy for this potential coercer to achieve that goal. Okay, um, models of multi-agent systems, uh, an example model of the voting and coercion scenario can look like this. So it's a state transition uh, network where the voter can wait at the beginning, then cast her vote for candidate one or candidate two, then wait again, decide to give the certificate uh, to the coercer or not, and so on and so on. So a very simple structure. <clears throat> Still, uh, one may uh, want to um, start the verification with such uh, simple formalizations. So, uh, ideally, we would like to have an algorithm where we uh, feed as the input the formula, the model, we press the button, and then we get the answer yes or no, the formula is true or the formula is false in the given model. Unfortunately, there are several uh, serious obstacles and probably the most important of those is so-called uh, state and transition explosion. So what I presented is uh, the uh, simple model of voting and coercion for a single voter and a single coercer. Now, if you add another voter, it already looks like this. So you can easily imagine that uh, for a realistic scenario, say, 10,000 voters or 100,000 voters, it becomes completely infeasible to even store the model memory of the computer, let alone analyze it in any meaningful way. Okay, now um, one of the sources of this complexity is the combinatorial explosion uh, of the space of states and transitions due to the interleaving of the voters' actions. So if we have K voters, uh, and each of them can enter the polling station, uh, fill in the ballot, cast uh, the ballot, and so on. Uh, these actions from different voters can appear in the model in any arbitrary ordering. Something, what, what can we do uh, to, to mitigate that? We can try to use a technique for model reduction. So to uh, instead of the full model, including all the possible interleavings, we would like to have a model that includes only some of those interleavings. And there is a technique uh, uh, for achieving that called partial order reduction. So let me talk about uh, the partial order reduction now. Uh, the technique is actually uh, known for almost 30 years now. Uh, it was originally introduced for linear temporal logic without the next operator. So something that obviously does not uh, allow to specify uh, the ability or inability of some agents to achieve their goals. Uh, nevertheless, the main idea is um, that, um, first of all, uh, the reduced model should uh, preserve exactly the same formulas as the original model, but it has to retain only the relevant paths that are possible in the original model. Uh, what does that mean? In case of 
uh, linear temporal logic. That means that if we have two, inter two possible interleavings of independent actions, it's typically enough to keep only one of the paths in the model, and the other one can be omitted. Okay, now uh, this is the well-known result uh, by Pellet from 1993. Indeed, if we uh, do, uh, in particular, if we do depth-first uh, incremental construction of the reduced model, uh, the reduced model obtained this way satisfies exactly the same formulas of the linear temporal logic without next as the original model. So it has two nice uh, 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 consequences. One consequence is uh, that indeed we have a reduced model which is completely equivalent and when we do the verification we can verify the, the properties that we like on the reduced model. And the second consequence which is no less important is that the reduced using the original full model. So we don't have to generate the huge model first and then uh, cut it down to a smaller size. We generate the smaller model right away. Now um, let's go back to ATL. So let's go back to the specification of the abilities of say the coercer of the voter. Uh, obviously the logic is much stronger, much more expressive. Uh, so it would seem that a much stronger and has hence less useful reduction is needed. But the big news uh, that we proved is that actually exactly the same reduction as for LTL without next is sufficient also for ATL without next uh, interpreted over memoryless imperfect information strategies. Okay. So this is the theoretical result. It says that, uh, well, uh, we can take the reduction scheme known for almost 30 years of the shelf. We can do the reduction and it's also theoretically good for the properties that we want to specify and verify for multi-agent systems. To give you an idea how, the, how good the reduction is, let's go back to the example of uh, uh, the voter and the coercer. As I showed you, this is the model for just one voter. This is the full model for two voters and one coercer. And this is the reduced model. So it is easy to see that uh, many states and even more of the transitions disappear in the reduced model. We have also conducted some more um, systematic experiments for a number of benchmarks. So this is the... Um, uh, pattern of uh, reduction results that we got for the uh, coercion and voting models. You can see that, um, uh, for example, for um, n equal to seven voters, the reduction uh, obtains uh, uh, almost uh, triple reduction of the state space and almost uh, quadruple reduction of the uh, transition space, which is, of course, very good news. For uh, the benchmark of trains, gate and controller, the reduction is even better. In fact, uh, the reduction of the state space and the transition space is uh, exponential in that case. So um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the models that we obtain are much, much smaller uh, than the full model. Uh, we also did some experiments for the uh, variant of uh, TGC uh, where one of the trains may be faulty and the reductions are not as good uh, here. They are clearly not uh, exponentials, but still uh, definitely worthwhile. Okay, so to conclude, um, the results that I have showed uh, um, demonstrate that for some strategic ability, we can get an effective uh, automated model reduction. And uh, what is important here is that take it off the shelf for free in the sense that we can actually reuse the tools that uh, were proposed and implemented and tested uh, for many years since the 1990s and uh, uh, they will work with uh, the much more expressive class of properties that we want to model check. So in a sense the result that we show is a sort of free lunch result. There is a free lunch out there 
and we can uh, definitely benefit from it. Thank you very much for your attention.